when physical proximity no longer supports the highest level of teaching and learning and relationship, the relationship will call for physical separation. What then appears to be the end of the relationship is not really the end. Relationships are eternal. They are of the mind, not the body since people are energy, not physical substance. Don't look at a separated relationship as failure if both people learn what they were meant to learn in that relationship then it was a success what's up it's sierra lafay welcome to my channel so uh, this is not going to be a video for all but i have been telling you guys for months that i was going to give you guys an update on the books that i have been reading and i finally have a moment to share with you all very excited because i have recently become such a book nerd and these books have helped me vastly with opening up my perspective with a lot of self-help a lot of self-reflection i wanted to share with you guys some of these books just in case you're interested in reading them as well i'll make sure to have them all linked in the description box below I have quite a few to get through so don't want to ramble too much and don't say if you haven't seen my previous video of some of the books that I have been reading I'll make sure to leave that in the description box below but the first one I'm going to share is called boundaries I did share my first video that I read the boundaries while dating and this one is simply boundaries you actually get two separate different sets of information which I greatly appreciate it it is a faith-based book it starts off with painting a picture of a woman's life who really doesn't have boundaries established and then from there the book takes you through how to set up your boundaries in different areas of your everyday life and then at the end of the book you see the same woman's life with just implementing these few simple boundaries how much her life has changed and how much more peace and joy she has just from being able to say the word no of many instances um, or just establishing what fits into her property lines which is how they describe boundaries is that it is really your property lines of what is you and what is not you i actually take notes on all the books i read but with this book i have found myself constantly giving my notes to some of my friends and my sister calls me the boundaries police so i'm always like oh they're crossing your boundaries here's my notes but i highly recommend this book they also have a boundaries in marriage book which is going to be the next boundaries book that i read um because i want to be prepared for marriage before i even walk into that another book that i got is called emotional intelligence habits i got the book in the mail and it was as thick as my bible and i told myself i was gonna i was gonna read that book but after reading the first chapter that alone was amazing but when your brain processes information they show this great diagram where the information actually has to go through the emotional part of your brain before it reaches the kind of intellectual part of your brain so you have to make sure to not let it get stopped in your emotional cortex i guess um like allow yourself to feel the emotions but make sure that you bring whatever it's happening um to the part of your brain where you have logical thinking going on so you can make great decisions or better decisions as opposed to keeping them stuck in the emotional part and making a decision based off your emotions which is what the church service i went to today was about but yeah god is god is talking to me and once you get through the first chapter it's like this book is not meant for you to read cover to cover this is a resource in a sense for you to evaluate some of the emotional intelligent habits that you are low in and at the end of the first chapter you have to take a test and the test comes free if you buy a new version of the book because it has like the code for you to go onto the website to take the test and then it'll show you some of the areas where you score low in your emotional intelligence and when I tell you that the test answers were spot on it was scary because i felt like the, the questions weren't even that in detail but the things that it said i needed to work on were some things that i had already been telling myself were things my emotions needed to mature in uh, one of those things being a growth mindset which i have a tendency when things don't go my way or don't go the way i expect i like to just shut down and i like to throw everything in the trash and just forget about it and then I always end up having to come back to it and face it. But um, I've been getting a whole lot better with that. But when I was able to read the section of the book about having a growth mindset, it actually gave me practical tools of things I need to do to help me not just completely break down and want to throw everything away. So that was extremely helpful. Which leads me into another book that I've been reading, which is called Mind Your Mindset. A beautiful book to read in combination with emotional intelligent habits, especially if you are struggling with 
having to work on your mindset. Mind Your Mindset actually talks about the signs of the neurons in your brain and how they work with making sure that you are being flexible and adjusting to life's twists and turns. And if you're someone like me who I don't just need the like tips, I need to know why that is something that you really should read to really get an understanding of how your brain operates so that way you're able to work with your brain better when trying to change it for the better I guess. And then if I can make this little trio of books that you could read all together if you're trying to work on your EQ is 10,000 hours. In this book, this book is actually quite a simple read. It took me only two days to read and I'll be honest when I was reading pretty much the majority of the book I was just like I already know this information. There was a couple of things here and there I was just like I learned something different but I was low-key getting a little frustrated They're giving us information that is pretty much I don't want to say elementary but after I finished reading the book I realized what the author was doing was helping to bring a lot of the things that were in the subconscious mind into the forefront of the mind and simply put the person you are 10 years from now, 5 years from now, a month from now is simply a reflection of the practices of what you do today and it is vital to make sure that you are doing the right practices so that way you can be the best version of yourself a month from now, 10 years from now. And there's always two ways of doing things. It's either the correct way or the incorrect way. You can do things the correct way and have it be a little bit harder now and easier later, or you can do things the incorrect way and have it be easier now and harder later. So I was low key kind of hating on the book, but when I got to the end, I was so grateful that I read that book. It not only talks about how much practices impact your life, it also gives you the steps of how to begin to change your bad practices and implement more positive ones into your everyday life. And then it gives you a template of you being able to draw out a map of where you're trying to go, like where you wanna go with your finances, in health, in relationship, et cetera, et cetera. And then once you have a final goal, what are the practices that you need to take in order to get there? So just by making a physical note that I can now see of where I want to go and some of the little things that I need to change in my day-to-day -day routine, I am seeing myself reach my goals a lot quicker than I was prior to have reading that book and writing these things out. Okay, then another book I've read is Budgeting 101 because that is something that I thought I would learn in college or at least high school didn't. Learned so many great tips of how to budget. I've downloaded the Every Dollar app which has helped me a lot with just being a lot more in control of my finances and not feeling like I am drowning from month to month. Especially being an entrepreneur that has been very very tough. Um, just never knowing when your next paycheck is coming but having some type of goal or plan or written out of where certain funds need to be allocated to and how to set up different accounts like your 401k especially when you are an entrepreneur. I have not been taught those things so that book's helped me a lot and then I got a book called The Law of Divine Compensation which I read after another book that I'll talk to you guys about in a second. That book helped me to see that compensation isn't just about trying to get money. We are called to have money for a greater purpose than just to show off our riches. Another book that I read that's helping me with my business is called How to Collaborate. When I was getting my master's in Spain, that was one of the biggest things that my professors would note is the importance of collaboration. And this was quite a few years ago and I feel like it was like kind of right before the hype of collaborations with different brands were really taking the forefront and a lot of marketing strategies for businesses. But I wanted to get a refresher on collaborations and this gave more of a formal setup of how to go about collaborating, um, the different types of collaborations, what to do during your collaboration and what to do post your collaboration. This next book I'm almost finished reading. My sister gifted this to me. This is called Power Moves by Sarah Jake Roberts. This book superseded my expectations. I thought unfortunately that it was just going to be like a sermon in a book which I appreciate because y'all know I love watching my sermons but this book talks a lot about psychology it talks about what real power is and how to obtain it and how to release yourself from feeling powerless I didn't think I would be this excited to read this book as much as I have been but every time I pick it up I'm just getting 
great information. And so this last book has actually been my favorite read of all time outside of the Bible. And this book is called A Return to Love. I'm not gonna lie, when I read the first chapter, I was kind of like, I don't know, because some of the author's insights were just, I agree with a lot of it, but then there was a couple of things that I wasn't sure that I necessarily agreed with. But when I tell you, I get so much revelation with every single page. The basis of the book is that at the end of the day, we are all longing and searching for love. Love is the solution to every single thing in your life. This book is an author's reflection to The Course in Miracles. And one of the key things that she mentioned throughout the book that really stuck with me is that all a miracle is, is a change in perception. And it made me think about many of the miracles that Jesus did is that when people went up to him and asked him to heal them, he would simply say, your faith has healed you. I'm not saying that miracles are limited to your change in thinking, but that is one of the biggest parts of many miracles. One of the things that she said that really helped me with having to be at peace with being separated from certain people, when physical proximity no longer supports the highest level of teaching and learning and relationship, the relationship will call for physical separation. What then appears to be the end of the relationship is not really the end. Relationships are eternal. They are of the mind, not the body since people are energy, not physical substance. Don't look at a separated relationship as failure if both people learn what they were meant to learn in that relationship. Then it was a success. And then something beautiful that she said about marriage, which this book isn't about marriage, it's really about one being ready to return back to inner peace. Um, but she said, a man's wife is literally God's gift to him and a woman's husband is God's gift to her. The gift for marriage isn't just meant for the two people, but also a blessing for the entire world. Marriage allows two people to become more than they would have been alone. The entire world is blessed by the presence of two healed people. You don't get married to escape the world, you get married to heal it together. But this book has a lot of amazing quotes with helping you to reflect on yourself because one of the best gifts you can not only give to yourself but give to the world is to continually work on yourself, continue to heal and show God's love to his people. I was talking to my friend about this the other day because I was going through a little something and she mentioned that we have to understand that the world does not revolve around us. We are a part of something way, way bigger in God's grand plan to reconcile the world back to him. At the end of the day, that is something that I, especially being Christian, need to focus my energy on. Not trying to do things that'll necessarily benefit myself, but how am I benefiting society as a whole? But I'm very grateful for her for reiterating that to me and just helping me to begin to change my perspective and helping to create a miracle currently. So yeah, these are a few of the books that I've been reading and this is actually the next one that I have lined up because I'm almost finished with Power Moves. But this one is called The Power of Discipline, How to Use Self-Control and Mental Toughness to Achieve your goals. So when it comes to the fruits of the spirit, self-control is one of the most attractive ones to me. So that is something that I feel that I try my best to implement to practice and I want to continue to strengthen my self-discipline. So I'm very excited to see what tools that I get from this book. If you guys have any books that you've been reading or want to read, especially when it comes to self-help and just becoming a better person, please leave them in the comment section below. I would love to check them out. And if you have read any of the books that I mentioned, please let me know that as well and what you thought of it. I would love to have a little, little book chat with you in the comment section. But hope you guys enjoyed this video and until the next one, ciao.